Now, I want to mention a couple of different types of reflection to you. Okay? The first is a simple reflection which is effectively rephrasing what someone said. Okay? Quite a few people did that with me. Simply rephrasing what I said. Okay? Probably the most useful next one to distinguish, contrast that with, is what's called a complex reflection. Okay? A complex reflection in response to that is you might decide to change. Can you see that? Can you see how simple it is it's not good for you? It's quite a neat summary, isn't it? Yeah. You're picking out something that someone says, putting it in maybe similar words, and that's it. Okay? In a complex reflection, can you see this client hasn't said anything about change? Or it has, and this can't last. But this is extending it a little bit. You might decide to change. You get it. What will the client's response be to that? Sorry? The client will, exactly, the client will say, yeah, I've thought about it. It won't necessarily be resistance. It'll be resistance if this complex reflection is too extreme. Do you notice how it's got minimizing language? You might, right? If it was more, uh, if it was less sensitive and it was, you've definitely decided to change, you're going to get the resistance. Okay? So the use of understated language in reflection is very valuable. All right? But can you see here, in the palm of this person's hand, is the capacity to shift this conversation in a number of different directions, and reflection can be done for that purpose. So reflection is not just about listening and understanding and exploring and non-directive counseling. I feel that our, uh, 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 Bill Miller and my contribution here <coughs> has been to explore and demonstrate the power of using reflection to consider change. 